Speaking of Matt Hagen, let's go back to the four wide nationals in Charlotte. Don't look at that one on the left. Look at the one on the right. Matt Hagen, a major explosion. Matt Hagen wasn't smiling through this one. Look at that. Rear wheels completely off the ground. When you do that in a fuel funded car at 300 miles per hour, that is a big time explosion. But the good news for Matt is he not only came back, went to the finals on Monday in Charlotte, he went to the finals again in Houston. This is him taking on Jeff Moran, earning his first ever Nitro Funny Car Wally. A great day for Matt Hagen Woo! and the entire Don Woo! Schumacher team. You bet. Yeah. Give a scream. You are a Funny Car National Event winner. And right now, he joins us on our NHRA Race Day set. Good morning to you, Mr. Hagen. Morning. How we doing? Oh, doing great. Glad to be here. You know, let's talk about that first win. We talked about it on Friday. You have expectations of what it's going to be like, but when it actually happens, how is it similar? How is it different? I tell you, it's really overwhelming. Just seeing that on TV really brought back a lot of emotions. It was great. It's something I'll remember forever. So it's it's one of those things we work so hard for, and to be able to experience that and share it with the crew and the guys that, that work on the car is it, just great. And having Die Hard on there for my first win, it's really cool too. You know, I love the fact that, you know, you like to work on the farm and everything. And, you know, I, I do own a manure spreader, and I'm not talking about my <laughs> Facebook page either. An actual manure spreader. But I want to ask you, after that explosion in Bristol, you know, I know from a driver's standpoint, sometimes it takes a little while to get back acclimated once you get strapped in. How long was it for you before you got comfy again? I tell you, you know, that first time you go back up there, it's going through your mind. You're like, man, what, you know, what's going to happen? But, uh, you know, you got to get back on the horse. And it's it's one of those things that we uh, we got a great, a great car and a great team. And it's, it's easy for me to crawl back in there because I know it's going to be right. Or you got to get back on the count. Speaking of which, we're taking a look at the farm. H how big a farm? Tell us a little bit about the operation. We got a 500-acre uh, farm back home. We released a couple hundred acres down the road. And, uh, you know, it's just great. It's a good good polar opposite for me. It's, it's drill and driven out here. And back home, it's at my pace. Now, you, you have the track record here, too. You have both ends of the track record, actually. But obviously, with the 403 at 313, as hot as we saw yesterday, yeah. it's not going to be the same. Uh, yeah. what, what are your chances, you think, today? I think it's going to be right now. It's, it's going to be hot out there. And uh, you, we're going to see a lot first round going down the track, I think. But after that, it's going to turn into a driver's race. So hopefully, we can pedal well today. And hopefully, we don't have to pedal. But uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's going to be hot and nasty. So let's get it down the racetrack and have fun with it. Well, one thing we know for sure, Matt Hagen would have not gotten to victory lane without the help of co-crew chiefs Tommy DeLog and John Mellon right now. Both those gentlemen are standing by with our gentleman, Gary Gerald. Well, here is the brain trust behind the recent success of Matt Hagen, Tommy DeLago, John Medlin. They call the tuning shots, make the critical decisions. How significant, how important to be able to get that breakthrough victory with a young driver last weekend, Tommy? I think any win, any first win, no matter if it's a young driver or an older driver, is very significant because you have to learn how to win. And you can't learn how to win until you win. So we finally maybe learn how, but we'll see and John Medlin as you've made the transition to a new racing team what's your comfort zone like now well it's outstanding since the day I got here Tommy and Glenn all the crew and actually all the crew chiefs on all the cars made me feel very very welcome and I feel real fortunate to be a part of this team and these guys are trying to ensure that Matt Hagen continues the momentum of that victory in Houston his first round pairing day will be against Jeff Arend Speaking of Jeff, and that's your free, yeah, first round matchup. Well, what, are, what are your thoughts about taking on the man, uh, well, who, who you kept from getting the Wally? I tell you, I think he's out for me this weekend. So uh, hopefully we can get up there and leave on him and, uh, you know, never look back. But Jeff's a good driver. He, uh, he always leaves line well, and we got to go up there and do our job. That's a great matchup. We also got a Geico Power Sports matchup to watch. It happens at Funny Car, too. Teammates. He got to go with Robert Height and John Force, the boss up against the defending full throttle champion and Robert Height. Both cars are going to be loaded for bear. I'll tell you what, it's going to be a great matchup, I think. Let's take a look at funny car points, as I mentioned, one third of the way through the regular season before the countdown to one begins. We've talked about John Force and his resurgence, but how about the youngster Matt Hagen up to the number two spot? Pretty close after that. There's a lot of points you can switch places today, Mike. Yeah. Definitely a lot of good race cars, funny cars. Always been a very competitive category. And I'll tell you, I'm impressed with Matt being up there in that number two spot right now. Now let's take a look at session number four. We all thought Ashley Forsood, based on the track temperature and the conditions, was going to be the number one qualifier, but Del Worsham said not so fast. That was a backbreaker in that final session to be able to go out there and run a 418 in the heat. It just uh, was pretty amazing for that Allen Nobby team to be able to do that. How impressive a run was that to you? Can, can you duplicate those things today? You know, that was real impressive for her to go out there and do that in that heat of the day like that. So, you know, I, I know Tommy's got a good uh, graph that he can put in the car to get pretty close there. Right now, we're worried about just putting 
putting four solid runs together today and and uh, you know really not not get out there and worry about so much ET is just round wins we just got to go race our race and don't worry about who's beside us all right well it is fan question time we're going to find Bruce Gibson from Napa California with a question for Matt Hagan Hey, Matt, what's harder, roping a calf or roping a funny car? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a great question. I tell you, I've been beat up a little bit by a funny car, but I've definitely been beat up by those calves out there. So I'm going to have to say the calf. It's uh, it's always uh, a handful when you grab a hold of one of those things. What's the worst injury you got from a calf? Uh, well, a I've been, been kicked pretty good. So, uh, you know, I've had to lay on the ground and kind of, you know, gather myself back up. But these funny cars are pretty nasty out there, too. So I'm learning all about that. So uh, I think definitely the cow for now. <laughs> More with Matt. Graham email report time and another question from Matt Hagan. And it comes to us from right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. What's the difference between driving a funny car and a pro mod? That's where you got your start, and that's why you get to answer this. I tell you, it's, it's a great experience to drive a pro mod. A lot of finesse in that, that situation, but there's a lot of footwork going on in those cars early. Funny car, a lot of, a lot of work going on all the time. you got to manhandle those cars down the racetrack. As Mike Dunn knows, uh, they're a handful all the time. It's a good-looking race car you see there and the crew. But i got to ask you, your dad was not in Houston. Whoa, that's that's tough. Yeah, it was. You know, he uh, he usually gets out here to most of these races. And for him to miss out on our first win, he was really disappointed. But we got back home, got that trophy on his desk, and did a lot of celebrating when we got back home. Yeah, good, good stuff. Stan Man, fire away with the stat of the race. Six different drivers of one funny car for Don Schumacher, Matt Hagen, the latest that adds up to 56 funny car race winnings, but put it in perspective, Tony Schumacher, the flagship, 62 wins for Don Schumacher with the Army Top Fuel car. Wow, that's some pretty wow. impressive stats. Don Schumacher, what does he mean to you to get this opportunity to do what you're doing now? It's huge. You know, when you think about Don Schumacher, you're, you're at the top of the ladder. So uh, to be able to drive for a, a guy like that is, is big for my career. Jeff Ferrand in round number one, Mike. Uh, wow. That big giant orb in the sky. What's it going to be like today? Well, that's going to be a big matchup for all the matches are going to be big, but it's going to be a very tricky track conditions. And like Matt said, drivers are going to have their work cut out for them. And going to have your hand on that brake. Be ready for just about anything today. <laughs> yeah, I'd say it's, it's going to be tricky, but, uh, you know, I really feel confident in our crew and our crew chief, and I think we're going to go out there and go some round wins. Best of luck to Matt Hagan. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you, Matt, for coming for our entire crew. Thank you for joining us.